before we get into the video today, I just want to give a quick shout out to one of our sponsors, Gnostic TV. Gnostic TV is ancient wisdom reimagined. This is a Netflix for those who are spiritually curious and want a place to go where there is no censorship. I personally am doing a whole series on Gnostic TV called The Esoteric Explorer, where I am providing exclusive content to Gnostic. Gnostic TV is a host to all sorts of different content creators, many of whom are your old favorites. If you would like to check out Gnostic TV, there is a link down in the description box below. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Esoteric Atlanta. My name is Bryce. This is just a quick, quickish little video. On Friday, September 20th, 2024, I had this hankering, this desire to go and visit the gravesite of the Oracle of Ages, Mahaley Lancaster. Now, if you don't know who Mahaley Lancaster was, I have covered her before in a video, which I will place down in the description box below, but I'll give you just a brief synopsis. Mahaley Lancaster was from a very, very small town here in Georgia. We're talking the middle of nowhere, Roosterville, Ropeville, that whole area. It's like West Georgia, right on the Alabama border. A beautiful area. Georgia is a gorgeous, gorgeous state. And she was a psychic medium. She would do readings for people. Um, but she was also a very religious woman. She was a very Christian woman, which to me, Mahaley Lancaster, as I've said many, many times, I she kind of represents the eccentricity of the South. And that's part of the reason why, one of the many reasons why I opened this channel. Because for me personally, there's nowhere else in the world I would rather be from than the Southeast. And more specifically, the Deep South. Now, a lot of people have this image of the Southeast of the United States as being super, super religious. In fact, it is often re referred to by two nicknames, the Sun Belt, because it's this is one of the hottest places on earth and also the bible belt but here's the thing that i keep telling people the fundamentalist aspect of the south of the christian faith is actually a very small minority of people down here in the south for most people in the south they are again very eccentric or probably would be seen from an outsider as being very eccentric for us it's just normal for example everybody will go to church on sunday we're all Protestants down here. We got a beef with the Catholics. We're all either Presbyterian or Baptist or Methodist or Episcopalian. But then on Sunday night, you're probably doing some root work with your voodoo mumba. That's just how it is down here in the South. In fact, almost everybody's mama has some sort of concoction that they've learned over time to either protect themselves, to keep demons out of their houses. Very, very, very witchy down here right most of us who grew up in the south have a very very witchy perspective on magic in fact as i stated earlier the southeast is one of the absolute hottest places in the in the world and i mean i've traveled the world i've lived in many many places and many places that are perceived to be hot are hot but they're not as hot as the southeast and that's because of the humidity the southeast is notoriously like at 100 percent humidity at about a hundred percent at about a hundred Fahrenheit, which would be around 40 Celsius. And so with that being said, the South, the, the, the South becomes its own character in that sense because it breathes. The land actually breathes. And that's part of the reason why people believe many people in the South talk slow. They're real southern in the way they talk, and it's very slow. And usually that's because it's hot outside. It's just too damn hot to talk fast. And again, the Southeast is a combination of Protestant Christianity, the Voodoo faith, and Native American faiths as well. And that kind of snowballs into this modern day culture, again, here in the South. 
if you've been on this channel for a long time, you know I'm very protective of the voodoo faith. I feel like Hollywood has done a huge disservice to the voodoo faith. Most Southern people are protective of this faith because it is one of our leading belief systems down here in the South. And so for someone like Mahaley Lancaster, she absolutely embodies what it means to be a Southern woman. Again, she would go to church every Sunday, but she was doing readings and psychic evaluations for people from all over the world. No, no, she was not famous just here in the Southeast. She was famous all over the world. People would travel for miles and miles, different countries, just to have a reading with Mahaley Lancaster. She herself was quite a character. She had a glass eye. She would also notoriously wear her father's army coat around town, and she loved dogs. She had a pack of dogs that would follow her everywhere. Jessica and I speak about this in the upcoming footage, but it is stated that the little white church, little white Methodist church where she is buried, the church that she went to when she was alive, she would bring her dogs to that church every Sunday, and Jessica couldn't remember specifically if the dogs would wait outside or if they would be ushered into the chapel and sit at Mahaley's feet. I remember it being that the dogs would be let into the chapel with her. Mahaley Lancaster was also very, very prominent in education. She was one of the first attorney, female attorneys here in the state of Georgia, and she helped solve a couple of unaliving cases. And that's what I want to pull up for you guys now before we look at the footage. Again, I'm going to attach the the past videos I've done on Mahaley down in the description box below. But I just want to give you this brief synopsis before we get to the footage so you understand how, how special it was for Jessica and me, two Southern girls, to spend a day with Mahaley Lancaster. So Mahaley was born on October 18th, 1875, and she left this earth on November 22nd, 1955. She was an American lawyer, political act activist, midwife and teacher best known for having participated in two of Georgia's most high-profiled unaliving trials involving de defendants Leo Frank in Marietta and John Wallace in Coweta County. She was involved in Leo Frank's defense and in Wallace's case as a witness for the prosecution. We'll get to that in a moment because there is a movie that they made based off of the John Wallace case in Coweta County. We're gonna, it's gonna be in this. So basically like this guy commits an unaliving and he hides the evidence, we'll say, and he goes to Mahaley for a uh, reading to make sure he's safe. And so she becomes a witness for the prosecution because of that. Anyway, true story. Born Mah uh, Amanda Mahaley Lancaster, she grew up in Heard County, Georgia, where she lived for most of her life. And Heard County, um, again, we talk about this because at the end of this, we do go to an undisclosed location nearby to for Jessica to show us where she goes Bigfoot hunting. The Heard Trope County, there's like a corridor in this area in Georgia where there's a lot of paranormal experiences, a lot of UFO, UFO activity, and this is exactly where Mahaley was from, which is very, very interesting. Mahaley Lancaster was 39 years old in 1950 during the Leo Frank case. She was one of the few public voices in, in Georgia to defend Frank. That's a very complicated case. I've spoken about it in a few, uh, I've spoken about it in a few of my past episodes regarding Georgia. He was basically accused of like unaliving this young girl, but he it looked like he was pretty much innocent, but he basically was the scapegoat for the situation. 32 years later, in 1947, the 71-year-old Mahaley Lancaster took part in the Wallace trial, later described in the book Unaliving in Coweta County. In 1983, made-for-TV movie of the same name. She was portrayed as a local oracle by 54-year-old June Carter Cash. June Carter Cash, Johnny Cash's wife, played her in this movie. Cash's real-life husband, Johnny Cash, played the key role of the persistence persistent Sheriff Lamar Potts, determined to bring to justice the arrogant John Wallace, played by Andy Griffith. Again, this is all based on a true story, my friends. And if you have not seen this movie, it's by the same name. You guys know I can't say the M word. Um, you kind of get to see a little bit of what M Mahaley Lancaster was probably like when she was here. 
political campaign. Uh, Lancaster ran for Georgia legislator in 1926, the first woman to do so. She ran on a platform advocating roads and railroads into rural counties, public schools, and the passage of a law that mandated that doctors must deliver babies regardless of the family's ability to pay fees. She did not win, but some of her ideas were eventually carried out. Um, passing and legacy. Mahalia Lancaster passed on the 22nd of May, 1955. In addition to her legal, political, and educational activities, she was also described as a noted fortune teller, numbers runner, and numbers runner, and self-proclaimed oracle of the ages. She's buried in the cemetery at Caney Head Methodist Church. That's where we went. So anyway, this is the Mahalia Lancaster story, guys. And so Without further ado, we're going to head over to the footage that we took on, on Friday with Jessica, the cryptid huntress. And then, of course, we're going to go into some of the areas where Jessica does her Bigfoot hunting nearby. And it's interesting because there's definitely some things that she talked about before on her show. But seeing it in person and seeing what she's talking about in person... I really understood the gravity of what she was saying. Now, I must apologize for the footage. As I said, it was really hot on Friday. It's normal down here. Um, it was probably around 100 degrees Fahrenheit, which is about 40 Celsius with 100% humidity. And the time of day, we got to the cemetery, which is about an hour and a half outside of Atlanta. We got there at not a really great time, uh, light-wise, for filming. And so if you see the footage looking kind of strange, we were trying to film ourselves on my phone and we were having a really hard time seeing because the sun was in our eyes. And so if it looks like we're squinting a lot, that's why. So if it bothers you, just listen to, I, I let Jessica, I, I actually, I think Jessica's a fabulous storyteller. So she does most of the talking in this, um, telling most of the stories. She grew up around this area. Um, and so if, if, if the footage bothers you with the way we're, we're squinting, then just listen, just listen to it. It's not, nothing we could really do about it given, um, the circumstances we were dealing with while we were filming. So anyway, you guys, um, I'm also going to be tagging Jessica's channel down in the description box below. Make sure you follow the Cryptid Huntress. She's going to probably be on later this week to cover another story. And we've also got some more field trips planned. So anyway, you guys, enjoy. It took us about an hour and a half to get to Mahaley Lancaster's grave outside of the city of Atlanta, Georgia. Mahaley Lancaster lived in a very rural area, and she also was buried in a very, very rural area. All right. Look who, look who we got here. We got a special guest today, Mahaley Lancaster herself, with the cryptid huntress, Hi. Jessica. Mahaley was a female. Yeah. And guys, we did, we did, bring, we did give her, the, I don't know if you can see that, the sun's really bright. It's hot as hell. Um, we gave her her dollar and her dime. That's what you give her. There's a bucket for a dollar and a dime for her. Uh... Now, Jessica, I'm going to put the camera on you. Okay. Because I have done this show a couple of times with my audience. Can you tell people kind of the story of Mahaley, br briefly, like the story of Mahaley Lancaster? Yeah. So Mahaley Lancaster was a famous fortune teller from Heard County in Georgia, northwest Georgia, or north, kind of midwest Georgia, I guess. And uh, And I grew up knowing stories about her because my grandmother had a fascination with her and uh we I, my grandmother actually lived not too far from here and uh she she knew people she had stories i don't know if she ever actually met mahaley herself but uh, people would travel from all over the country to have their fortune sold by mahaley uh, out here in roosterville i think she lived in roosterville georgia and uh sit down in herd county um when I was a kid, my grandmother wrote stories, and I would tell them at storytelling contests for my school, and I won one of, I won those contests, and one of the stories was about Mahaley Lancaster when I was in second grade. So I always had a fascination with her, but she was Georgia's first woman lawyer. Mm -hmm. uh, she also was an educator. She was a teacher, came from a very nice family, good, a good, well-to-do family. Yeah. And she had... She was in a band. They had like the, is it the Mahaley family band or something? Oh, that's crazy. It's yeah. wild. Yeah. Uh, but she had a wonderful, really cool background. She was a, a philanthropist and uh, active in politics and all that. Uh, but she was Georgia's first woman lawyer, which I always could appreciate. Um, but as she got older, she had the gift of sight. And uh, people would, like I said, come from all over the country to uh, – get their fortunes sold by her, and she made a very good living doing that. Uh, she charged a dollar and a dime, 
and that's why uh, Bryce has put a dollar and a dime over here today uh, as an offering uh, to Miss Mahaley Lancaster. So, uh, you know, an, a, one of the darker sides of Mahaley, uh, of the story of her, is that, you know, when I was in high school, I went to high school not too far from here, and people would come out here and, you know, they called her a witch, mm -hmm. too. So people would come out here on the weekends and drive around the cemetery three times and do horrible things like desecrate her grave and stuff. And, hey, um, and when they would do that, their cars, the, the rumor was, the legend went, that their cars would malfunction. And they couldn't leave here. Like the tires would go flat, engine wouldn't start. And so kids would come out here pretty often to test it. Okay, to test it out and uh, when I was when I found out about all that yeah I did come out here one time in high school and I learned I knew the story about my Haley because when I was a kid you know my grandmother was actually gonna write a book about her she got a phone call in the middle of the night from a strange woman who said uh, you know miss Duke this is so-and-so from Florida my Haley wanted me to say thank you for writing a book about her and and it scared my grandmother and she quit writing that book <laughs> So she, she just quit writing it uh, that day. But, um, but I knew the story about her. I knew she wasn't a real witch, you know. Um, she was just misunderstood. And, uh, and so I, I knew what people were doing out here, and it kind of upset me. And so I went and did a mass media project, brought my class out here. We filmed. My grandmother came with us. And we told the true story about Mahaley, and we broadcasted it all over my high school. And, uh, and I, I hope that that helped uh, bring attention to who she really was. And not the witch that people claim that she was. Yeah. And I, I will say, you guys, I covered Mahaley on my channel. And, oh, look, somebody actually, that says happy 148th birthday. So somebody left this out on October 18th, I guess, a few years ago. But anyway, um, <laughs> I can hold it if your hand's hurting. It's so much, we're filming on the cell phone, guys, because we're, we're literally out in the middle of nowhere, aren't we? Yeah, we are. We're about an hour and a half outside of Atlanta. Um, and so I feel like I found Jessica because I had done a story on Mahaley. On my channel with our friend Angie who now lives in South Carolina the fickle chickle and I was just doing some research deeper research into Mahaley and that's how I found Jessica and so I and I reached out to Jessica and that's how we became friends yep. so I feel like Mahaley I think she kind of brought, we'll say the, the good witches together yeah the good, the good people together and you guys don't go don't go desecrating graves that's not cool no matter what you think of the person or whatever legends you, you don't do that you know, and that's the funny, I mean, we are literally, I mean, Jessica, this is like, for real, an old Southern church. I'm going to hold this up, you guys. Can you guys see that? That white Methodist church. I mean, that is an old Southern church, isn't it? Yeah. And this is, is the church you said she went to. She yes. went to this church. So yeah. you guys, like, she was doing oracle readings and doing psychic stuff for people. But then she was going to church. Didn't she bring her dogs to church with she her? Brought, her dogs would follow her. She had a whole bunch of dogs. Her sister's name was Miss Sally. And when people would come to visit her to get oracle readings done, uh, they would have to step over their dogs and stuff. They said they lived underneath her porch. Uh, but the congregation, she would the dogs would follow her to church on Sundays. And uh, they would sit outside. From what I understand, they would sit outside on the steps. Maybe they'd go in and sit at her feet. I don't know. Uh, but she had a bunch of dogs that would follow her around. Yeah. And she solved, she helped solve a couple of too. She did. Uh, there's actually a movie called Murder in Coweta County. It stars uh, Andy, Griffith. Andy Griffith. That's right. Johnny and, Cash. And June Carter Cash played Mahaley. Yeah. Uh, and so that's a great movie. It's a, based on a true story out of here in Georgia in Coweta This County. area. Heard County in Coweta. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So she, you guys just totally watch it. It's again, it's uh June Carter Cash plays Mahaley. Now she had a glass eye, didn't she too? She did. Well, Mahaley did. Yeah. 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 So she definitely, she definitely, um, kind of fit the 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 the, uh, the brand of being kind of eccentric mm -hmm. and and yeah, and she lived a pretty long life. So I'm gonna I'm gonna zoom up on the, the date, you guys. October 18th. So we're getting kind of close to her birthday, 1875 to November 22nd, 1955. So, um, she lived through a lot. God, that's a lot to live through, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Coming off of the Civil War, mm -hmm. going into the Industrial Revolution, into World War One, World War Two, Two World Wars. Yep. And then 19, I mean, my parents were born in the late 50s. So, <laughs> yeah. 
you know? So, and she was buried right here. And I'm, I'm telling you guys, like, we were in, we were in the middle of absolute no. Alabama's just like over there, isn't it? It is. We're it close touches. to this. Yeah. As a matter of fact, this area is called the Troop Herd Corridor. And that's what we call it. I'm a, I'm a Bigfoot field researcher. And, uh, of course, I'm into the paranormal and stuff. Yeah. So, uh, but this is an area that is part of the Troop Herd Corridor. Now, that is well known as being a, a hot spot of alien abductions mm -hmm. and high strangeness out here. Uh, we are near, not too far from Columbus. Yeah, Lagrange uh, Fort Benning is down there, and Lagrange. Yeah, there's some some different bases and stuff around here, uh, military based. But there's it's a lot of high strangeness. We actually do some Bigfoot research just right down the road from here, too. And so there's uh, I can I can promise you there's a lot of cryptids and all sorts of stuff roaming these woods out here. And yeah. we're definitely, I mean, you guys, like, this is, I mean, first of all, Georgia, in my opinion, Georgia is one of the prettiest states in the nation, especially yeah. North Georgia. Um, it's beautiful. It's green. There's a lot of red clay. Um, and, and it is, what's today's date? The 20th of September? Something like How that. How hot is yes. it out here, Jessica? It is, it's hot. I'm sweating, I'm sweating like a whore in church, y'all. Um, <laughs> outside of church. I'm just kidding. No, we're, out, we're outside of a church. Oh, so, no. there's, I mean, I, driving, driving out here, I've... Jessica, guess what we passed? And I and I realized I'd never seen one in real life before. A place where they sell livestock. Oh, yeah. That's out in Carroll County. In I had never thought. Yeah. We were passing by. I was like, I don't think I've ever seen one of those in real life before because I'm a city girl. Yeah. So we are definitely out in the we, – we love our farmers. We love our – we love – that's what keeps, what keeps America. But, y'all, look, I mean, look, how, look how blue the sky is. I mean, this is just – it's very hot and humid, but this is Georgia. So I guess we'll, we'll walk around and I'll take some footage – walking around but i definitely think you guys if you guys come out to mahaley's grave bring a dollar and a dime bring some flowers if you want to maybe we can i mean we're getting close maybe we can make a date to come back out here on october 18th and celebrate her birthday yeah if mahaley wants up. us to um i mean we're sitting on her grave there now you said jessica that there is a possibility that they moved her body i've heard that because her, this grave was getting desecrated so terribly now it, it is covered in concrete yeah. you know for safety purposes i guess I mean, a lot of these graves are covered well no they're not on concrete are they they have gravel over them there's a few hers but is definitely i i had been, i had heard at some point that, that her body was exhumed and it was buried elsewhere and um, they they do that a lot with especially in like with like root doctors and like voodoo mambas because i mean that, that's the one thing i love about the south is that our culture here is a very as a we're we're eccentric in the south aren't we yeah. Like, we're super eccentric. We'll go to church on Sunday, but we're doing some root work on Sunday night, oh, you know? No. We're pulling tarot cards and out and then the parking lot, you know? And that's because it's a combination of the voodoo faith, the Native American faiths, Christianity. So here is the grave. I'm going to back up a little bit. So you guys can see that it's been concreted in. They got concrete. And then, of course, is her sister buried here as well? Because her sister didn't marry. You never married either, right? She didn't. That was Sally, I think. So we've got a Benny. Oh, this is, so this is common. So I have a great, great aunt who has this exact same headstone down in Quitman, Georgia. Her name was Miriam, and she died at like two years old. She was my great grandfather's little, our older sister, actually. That was a very common headstone for, um, for babies back in that time. Same time period, late 1800s. Um, we've got a Charlie Lancaster. And then, I don't know, would this potentially be her sister? Because it's broken. I don't know. It could be. Um, that's interesting. Here's another little baby. Myrtle. We don't see a whole lot more Haley or Lancasters over here. Yeah, something that's probably... Because that looks like her mother and her father. Her father was a Freemason. There you go. So that's the, that's the church, guys. After we got done at Mahaley Lancaster's grave, Jessica decided to take us out to a place where she hunts Bigfoot. This is an undisclosed location for security purposes, but it is about 20 miles south of Mahaley Lancaster's burial site. Very, very, very close to Alabama. So that's how they, that's how Bigfoot marks its territory? Yeah. Yeah, you see how the sticks are like stuck yeah. in other sticks right here? Uh -huh. yeah. Oh, interesting. Yeah, because nature probably would not have done that, would it? Uh, no. Not this. No, 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 not how these are broken, too. Broken. And so Bigfoot does this to mark. 
So like how dogs pee on stuff, Bigfoot breaks sticks. Well, we joked around about how this could be a portal, too. Oh, yeah, interesting. Some people think that Robbie? Tree, a tree structure like this, they're actually harnessing the power, of, it's like a battery. Yeah. Oh. Mm-hmm. The cords are sort of good. The way it works, it's really like a thing. Uh, yeah, it looked, it looked a lot cooler last year when it was fresh. Yeah, but I can imagine it. Oh, yeah, pictures of it uh, when we first... The end of it. it. Where, where was the end? Was it locked up over, over here? Here's, here's the end right here. Yeah. Right here. Oh, okay. I see. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. So it was that okay. much of an angle. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
we are literally in the middle of nowhere. And that's fresh. Oh yeah, that's, that's a good idea. Yeah, get a reference. That has to There's be more. Right. And Robbie has been in here, so it looks like a, a cat that's kicked back dirt. Robbie's definitely been smelling something. So those aren't bear. Y'all don't think those are. So you don't think that's bear? There's not big cats. Cat. There's not cats that big in Georgia or, and, or anywhere around. Robbie. Oh, supposed to be. Robbie. No, I've, I've seen bear. Robbie. Bear. Robbie. I've seen bear. Robbie. 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 So because of the scratches, um, the expert thinks we need to turn around. Yes. No, I, I agree. I think we do. Am no, I, what are you doing? He's an expert. <laughs> well, when we've got Jessica a little unsure about those scratches and him a little bit unsure about those scratches and you guys missed it, I had to turn the camera off because usually when we had to put Ravi, the dog, our dog, back on a leash because he wasn't coming, was he? No. We were calling him and he was in a trance.